Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Seba, and today we're going to investigate a pretty insightful and simple portfolio optimization technique that is called ILPM, standing for Inverse Lower Partial Moments. And unlike some of the other portfolio optimization techniques, this one has a closed form solution, is pretty intuitive and does not require solver, while still building up on important concepts from modern and postmodern portfolio theory that are basically related to the downside risk. We would be able to minimize or at least adjust, limit the downside risk of a portfolio of assets of the order that we want. For example, we would be ordered to minimize or at least limit to some extent the downside risk as we wish to define it of a portfolio of assets and to visualize the application of the ilpm portfolio we've got five years worth of data on six major asset classes with daily returns already calculated just as in postmodern portfolio theory with satina ratio applications we have to consider an annual return target something that we don't want to fall below for example, a 10% per annum return. And as we've got daily data, let's convert this annual target into a daily target by using the geometric mean function, having uh, a daily target of four basis points. And then we have to consider the order uh, of our lower partial moments that we'll calculate. And here, one and two are perhaps the most intuitive uh, cases, with two being your regular semivariance, or if you take the square root of it, semi-deviation that goes in the denominator of the Satina ratio. Please check this video out if you're interested in this particular case and this most famous application of lower partial moments. One would be, on the other hand, the mean absolute error. And uh, that is not something that's frequently applied in case of uh, portfolio optimization. However, this can be any positive number, not necessarily even integer. And we can interpret higher orders of our lower partial moments as a more risk-averse investor, an investor that cares more about tail events. And that has a nice correspondence to something like uh, constant absolute uh, risk aversion utility functions, albeit uh, more heuristical and less based on optimization or sophisticated mathematics. So let's start with order two, which corresponds to semivariance, and calculate lower partial moments of our asset classes, and then construct our portfolio. Uh, lower partial moments uh, dwell on the uh, notion of um, semi-deviation and semivariance, just as in this calculation. So we'll be able to calculate the maximum from zero and underperformance below the daily target that we've just defined, then find the absolute value of that and raise it to the power of our order. So here, this order will be two. We need absolute values here to preserve the generality so that the same logic can be applied, for example, to a fractional power or to a non-even power of the lower partial moment. So let's calculate our lower partial moments. We'll need to calculate the average of the absolute value. We will need to calculate the average of the absolute value. And here, unfortunately, we cannot use the max function as it's not really applicable in Excel for arrays, but we can still use the if function and do just fine. Because if our daily underperformance below the target, which would be our daily target with column locked as the target stays the same for all asset classes, minus an array of daily returns throughout the sample, and if this underperformance is negative, which means that we have not underperformed, we return zero, and we return the expression if underperformance has been noted in this particular day. Then we'll close the parentheses, and having calculated the absolute values of this array elements, we can simply raise them to the power of the moment order, locking the column as well as the moment order stays the same, no matter how far we drag it down to the right. Then we can enforce this formula. 
drag it across. And finally, calculate the sum of inverse lower partial moments, which are the reciprocals of these figures we have just calculated for all six asset classes. So the sum of one over the lower partial moments gives us a pretty large figure, given that these values are quite small. Remember, we squared those and they were returns or even underperformances to start with, so that's not surprising. And our LPM portfolio weights are going to be inverse lower partial moments of individual assets divided by the sum we have just calculated. One over the lower partial moment divided by the sum of inverse lower partial moments with the column locked as well. And we can see that such a portfolio that you have just established has a sum of weights for 100%, simply because we have normalized our inverse lower partial moment by the virtue of dividing them by their sum. And this portfolio looks quite reasonable. We have got 40% in corporate bonds, 16% into both classes of stocks, 18% in gold, 18% in treasury bonds, and some real estate exposure as well. However, uh, what is also nice here is that as the absolute values are involved in the calculations, our ILPM portfolio would always have strictly non-negative weights, which is useful for investors who have got short selling constraints, for example. Let's see what happens if we change the moment order M. If the moment order is lower, for example, 1, when we treat our lower uh, absolute deviation as our relevant lower partial moment, we have got a portfolio that's quite closer to an equally weighted portfolio with a higher exposure to higher risk asset classes such as stocks and real estate. And as we approach something close to zero, our portfolio is much closer to an equally weighted portfolio still. At the limit, as moment order goes to zero, we would have exactly the equally weighted portfolio. However, if we increase the moment order, modeling our hypothetical investor as more risk averse, for example, increasing it to three, we have got exposures in safer assets, such as bonds and gold increasing, and exposures to risky asset classes decreasing. And if we go ridiculously further, we would have a portfolio that allocates more than half of the capital into gold, which is a well-known safe haven asset, and here the interpretation is quite reasonable. We can go as far as 100, which would have almost 100% exposure in gold, as that investor would value extreme tail risks the most, and therefore gravitate towards safe haven assets, which is a very good sanity check for this particular model. And that's all there is for inverse lower partial moments, or ILPM, and its use in portfolio construction. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.